Yep. So next up, we talked about it earlier. You guys already covered it. Actually, at contract manufacturing is number 13, but we covered it a little bit earlier. Um, also, you guys asked earlier, number 14 was vendor reps. I was talking about ways that you can get products into stores. So the vendor reps, some of the retailers do strongly require or urge you to make sure you have a vendor rep in place. Now, in the case of um, Stop and Shop, that opportunity was solely based upon vendor reps. And what ba basically vendor reps pitch your products to buyers. They do typically get a commission between three and 5%. So for example, if they are able to get you a deal with a Target, a Walmart, a Meyer, what have you, they typically get a three to 5% commission of whatever your, your net proceeds are. And that's after all of your costs and everything is incurred, they typically get a commission. Um, and so, you know, everybody's different, but I always tell people, you know what? Three to 5% of nothing is nothing. Um, so, and typically when you're looking for a vendor rep, I highly encourage people, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> to make sure that you're dealing with a vendor rep that has expertise in the area that you're in. For example, my vendor rep for Walmart lives right down there in Bentonville, Arkansas, and formerly spent years working for Walmart. My target vendor rep is right in the same building at Target headquarters on Nicolette Mall in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and has a longstanding relationship with Target. So you want to make sure, I know that Meyer is here in Michigan, and they use a company called Kehi. So just make sure that when you're looking for distributors and vendor reps, that you're finding companies that deal directly with those retailers. There's a lot of people that kind of hold themselves out as vendor reps or marketing agencies and things like that. And they say, oh, we deal with everybody. We deal with all the retailers. I don't recommend that. Um, uh, I was on Range Me. I, I spent thousands of dollars and personally, and I can only speak from my experience, I'm not trying to throw shade, but I spent money getting verified. I paid $300 for a 10 minute buyer meeting. Um, the, the stores are not doing that because they cannot accept money for meetings and things like that. But the, but the, the organization like Arrange Me can charge for that. Um, but I didn't have any success that way. So I just, I try to share that in the hopes to just kind of let people know how things are going. Um, and so that you know. Now also, Retailers, if you guys are interested in Target, you want to definitely apply through their Target Accelerator program. They also have what's called their Target Takeoff program. They typically open up those applications once a year. I always post them on all of my social media pages to let people know that they're accepting applications. Now's the time to apply. It's called Target Takeoff, Target Accelerator. They do it once a year. Um, if you have a product that you'd like to get into Walmart every year, Walmart does what's called open call, where they specifically accept made in America or products that are made or manufactured in the United States. They do this every year. Typically, um, it's, it's around June or July. I think it's been virtual for the past couple of years because of COVID, but they've been doing this program for probably, I want to say this is probably about the seventh year. So again, Walmart open call every year, Target takeoff, also Target accelerator. Um, for those of you who may have a clothing line or jewelry, things like that, Macy's has what's called the Macy's workshop. And they also do the workshop program every year. They open up the applications and you go on and apply. And again, for these programs, you wanna make sure that you're certified, okay? You wanna make sure, get your, get your certification in place first because that will allow you to be accepted into the programs. Also, don't just stick to the conventional ways of getting in. I'm gonna share with you guys, I ended up, um, applying to the Target Accelerator program two or three times, and I got turned down each time. And I don't know if it was because I was already in the Walmart. I don't know what the situation was. But when you apply, regardless of whether they send a rejection letter or not, you're on their radar and they are keeping your information and they do add you to their mailing list. And so I had applied and applied. They kept saying no, but they had my information. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, I get this invitation to participate in a, a Black History Month marketplace where they can showcase your products to prospective customers, okay? It was not a buyer meeting. It was not an open call. They didn't ask for a pitch deck or anything. But because it was Target, I'm like, I don't care what it is. It's an opportunity. I applied to do this, right? They set it up. Some of you have used StreamYard and Hopin, right? I'm doing my little Hopin. I'm doing my little pitch, talking to all the customers that are bouncing in. And so this young lady 
walks in and I'm talking to her, I'm telling her about glam and this and that, exfoliates, moisturizes, my whole nine. At the end of the meeting, she's like, oh, by the way, I'm the senior buyer for cosmetics. Ah! Just like that. I had no idea. I'm just sitting there like, wow, wow. She's a senior buyer for cosmetics. And so from that meeting, it was really, really awesome because we got to talk one-on-one. -on -one. And as I look back now, I think she did that intentionally because I think that she thought if I let her know I'm the senior buyer at the outset, she may be like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. Wait, I don't have my pitch deck. Wait, hold on. I got a capability statement. She don't want any of that. She wanted to know, talk to me like I'm a normal customer because that's really what it's all about. You know, just, just, just come clean. Let's just keep it real. Let's just talk one-on-one. -on -one. And I've got to tell you, they have been absolutely amazing. Each and every one of them, they've been absolutely amazing. So um, I cannot encourage you guys enough. Anything that you see with that particular retail, Nordstrom, I think, does the same type of program. I hear that Ulta is doing the same type of program. Make sure that you're, you're following what they're doing and you're getting in. The other thing I want to share with you guys, too, I, I've said it repeatedly on this call, do not despise small beginnings. Now, if I had blown it off talking about, look, I don't do vending events anymore. I'm in Walmart. If I had that attitude, I would not be in Target right now. So someone asked me um, at one of the other workshops, they said, well, do you still do pop-ups? Do you still do vending events? I absolutely do. I just got back from a summit in Orlando two days ago, and I'm going to Houston for a praise in the park, an outdoor pop-up event that the radio station is sponsored, where all I'll be doing is shaking hands and promoting my brand. So just please know that landing on big box retail stores does not mean that the work stops. When I went to Walmart and I got my yes, they told all of us, they said, now the real work begins. No one believed that. They were like, are you kidding me? Do you know how hard I work to get here? Do you know how nervous I've been? Do you know how, how much I've had to grind just to get to this point? So when they said that, everybody was like in utter disbelief. But I can honestly tell you that they, they said that because they know that it's true. That's when the real work begins. When it lands on the retail shelf, that's not the time to rest on your laurels. That's when the real grind begins. Because guess what? If that product does not do well on the shelf, you will be a one-hit wonder and they will charge that your products right back to you on your dime. So it's not just landing on the shelf and being able to say, hey, I'm in Target, hey, I'm in Walmart. No, it's making sure that you are going to promote that brand. The other thing I want to let you guys know, too, on your social media, if you have any aspirations of dealing with big box retailers, clean up your social media, okay? I'm just keeping it real. There should be no... No profanity, no madness, no twerking and twerking. I mean, really, honestly, because these buyers, these retailers, they're going to be on your social media. They go through it. They're going to do their due diligence and find out who you are and what are you doing. And so I want to almost tell you that your life is not your own once you become, um, um, once you get on the shelf. I was out in Houston. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I was in Orlando a couple of days ago. And I went live on my, on my Instagram. And I'm going to the different stores. And I'm meeting all of the sales consultants. And I'm posting all these pictures. And my Walmart buyer is like all up in my, on my IG live. And now you she on there watching it, but she's putting in comments like, hey, be sure to send me pics because everything I do, I send them pictures. Um, my products, I was so blessed to get my products in the swag bags for the African American Film Credits uh, Awards that went on out in Hollywood. Um, this has been a few weeks ago. So I, I got there. I sent the products ahead of time to go in the swag bags. And that's where, you know, uh, uh, Audrey and Will Smith, all of them got honored there, right? So I'm down there and I'm trying to like, I'm like looking like I want to belong up in here. Like I'm doing my thing, right? And up on the carpet comes Megan Good. And she looks right over and she's like, oh, I can't wait to hug you. Guys, I'm sitting here looking like, I didn't do that, but that's what I'm thinking on my mind. Like, cause I don't know making good. I mean, she's on the roof for men on the moon, but she says that. And then she literally comes over and she gives me this big hug. Like I'm her long lost sister. Okay. So you guys can only imagine I'm like lighting up social media. Okay. Just like that, because it was such a, you know, great opportunity. I'm like, Hey, I'm out here and I want to talk to her about being a brand ambassador or a glam ambassador, as I say. Um, and then also I went out for, for a VIP event and Tori Hart was launching her new, her uh, newest um, um, single there at this same event and I'm literally pulling my products out of the box like a bag lady on the street and I'm putting them into as many hands as possible hey I'm here from Detroit this is my brand I just landed in Target stores I would really like it to just give you this product if you can just you know try it let me know how you like it please give it a shout out on your social media what have you this is this is what you do this is how it works and I mean it's a grind and a grind and a grind 
thankfully after that i was able to connect with someone else who knows her and now she's going to come on board as a glam ambassador as well so i am so so super excited but i say that to say if it wasn't for going out to these different events and things like that i would not be able to meet these awesome and amazing people and every time i do this i've got pictures of tori hard and and megan good i send them over to my buyers so they can know, look, I'm out here grinding. I'm out here, I'm out here, you know, beating the pavement. I'm out here talking to as many people as I can, shaking as many hands as I can. So they know that you're working. And can I tell you guys, they love it. They absolutely love it. When, when my buyer for Walmart popped up, she and she saw that, she's like, be sure to send me pics. You know why she said that? She said that because everywhere I go, I don't care if you're doing a, a corner pop-up, a farmer's market, make sure you're posting pictures, make sure you're hashtagging everybody and everything, because they're going to be on your page looking to see what are you doing with your brand? What are you doing out here? Are you moving the product? Are you, are you actively and aggressively promoting your brand? What are you doing? And if they don't see any presence out there and nobody can find you and they don't know who you are, when you have that meeting, your likelihood of getting in is gonna be significantly lower because again, they want to know that you are out here making it happen. They wanna know that you're out here grinding, doing that, what you can, because again, guys, I said it earlier, it's a partnership. It really is a partnership. And when you get on the shelf, all they're giving you is an opportunity. You don't get paid to be on the shelf. You get an opportunity. The rest falls squarely upon you to run your business and to make sure that people know who you are. Hey, Tiffany, I have a question for you. Those um, those events that you're talking about, is there a particular place that I can find or that we could find those events being hosted? Or is there like a suggestion of a website or anything like that? You know what I did? I'll tell you guys, there's different, on, if you go on social media, like on Facebook, they have all type of marketplaces. People post for vendor events. I can't even tell you guys how many Facebook groups I'm in. Sometimes I'll just ask, is anybody doing any pop-ups this weekend? Who's doing a vending event for Mother's Day? You know what I mean? They're, they'll be in your local neighborhood. There's usually, um, there might be moms groups. There's usually um, uh, different organizations, some of the, the fraternities, sororities, everybody, especially around Mother's Day, there's always a lot going on. I actually found out about the event in LA because it was one of my sorority sisters and she just posted that she, she had posted her flyer. And, and I am not, I'm notorious for, if I hear about a, a business summit or I hear about a VIP event, I'll reach out directly. Hey, can I ship you some product to put in your swag bags? Is this something I can come? Can I come and speak to your audience about reach, getting products on the store shelves? So it's literally like that. I, if I see a flyer, a 313 day, you know, I saw that. I'm like, oh, that's something I want to be a part of. Do you guys need speakers? Can I send you some samples? Can I give products out to, to your uh, uh, attendees? That's how it works. And, and then eventually people start reaching out to you. Once you really start, you know, getting out there, they'll start reaching out. Hey, can you come and speak to this group? Can you come and do this? We got an opportunity here. I almost got the, I mean, the Grammys, you guys, I almost got in the swag bags for the Grammys. And that was because of being in the African-American Film Critics Awards. But unfortunately, by the time I got the invite, they had selected everybody, but, but that's how it goes. It's like, it's like a domino effect. Once you get out there, the opportunities will start finding you. But to get started, all on social media. I highly recommend that you guys join the business um, groups that are in your respective states. Like, for example, they've got, you know, business owners of, of Houston. They've got uh, uh, women business owners in Texas. I mean, there are all these different groups. You want to join them. You want to be a part of them because they always share what's going on in their respective cities. Yep. Wonderful. Hi. Were there any more questions? I'm sorry. Yeah, I have a question. Um, hi, Tiffany. You are absolutely amazing. So I'm Anetta from yes. Cincinnati. So um, I went down the route. And if you guys hear my little baby, uh, sorry, but um, I went down the route of having a private label company. And now I have a handmade um, product line. And mm -hmm. how extensive is the um, like testing for stabilization and all of that with the handmade? It is. It's it, it's pretty detailed. I mean, I'm not even I'm not a chemist, <laughs> um, but I can tell you that you are going to send in like your IFRA forms. And um, and if you have, let's just say, for example, my essential oils, I source them with a particular company like here in Michigan. So they'll be able to give you some of the materials that you need, because typically they have a breakdown of all of their ingredients. So it's basically a matter of just uploading them and sending them and then knowing your formulations, like what percentage you're using of, you know, for example, 
lavender essential oil, what percentage is that? You know, how much sugar, how much brown sugar, how much coffee, making sure that you have those components in place. Okay, that sounds great. So it's it, as long as I have, which I have all the formulas and everything, as long as I have that and it's consistent, yes. I'll be able to help. I'm going to manifest this, but I'll be able to um, be on the shelves too. Yes, you will. Everybody okay. that's on this call is going to be on the yes. show. Yes, okay. Yes. Now, yes. Um, and, and, you know, and that brings up a good point that I always share. You know, I tell people, I'm like, you know what, help me help you. You know, um, I can honestly tell you guys that when I met with my buyer, you know, um, and we talked about store accounts, you know, I told her, I said, you know what, you can give me five stores. You know what I mean? And I told her, I said, because I'll tell you what, I said, I'd rather you give me five stores and I kill it in those five stores than for you to put me in 5,000 stores and I don't do well because I can't meet the capabilities. And I told her, I said, I'm not here to be a one hit wonder. And I said, it's very important for me to get this right. And I said, and the reason I have to get it right, I said, because this is so much bigger than me. I said, this is not about me. I said, listen, I want to do really, really well and be that stellar supplier. So that when I come back to you and I say, hey, Lisa's got a great product out here. She's got a hand cream that's very similar to mine. She uses clean ingredients. Can I pitch my pro Can I bring her product and present it to you? And I told her, I said, and I want you to be able to give Lisa a yes on the strength of your business relationship with me. You understand what I'm saying? So, yes. so that's the way it works. I get out here and I kill it with this brand. I believe you put your foot in that door and you hold it open for those who are going to come behind you. Yes. And so, so, so why it's so important that I succeed at Target and Walmart is because if my brand doesn't do well, if I don't do well on the store shelf, well, guess what? Everybody's watching. You're going to have a real hard time convincing them that you're going to do something different in a different way. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's like united we stand guys and divided we fall. And that's real talk. Yes. 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 We do um, have another question in the chat. Sure. Um, so, from Ethan, it's saying, so my husband had a former product of his, of his in place in Whole Foods. And when they first stocked it, they placed it on the bottom shelf. Is that a standard practice? If that happens to my product, what is your advice on telling customers how to find it? So yes, that is very common. They always say you have to work your way. If you start at the bottom, now we're here. Ah, so <laughs> you, start, you start at the bottom. You start at the bottom and you work your way up and eventually you'll be at eye level, but you don't, you don't go in with an end cap. You got to earn an end cap. You don't go in being eye level. You got to earn that as well. So yes, they start your, but here's the thing. If you're driving traffic, listen, I have gone so far as to tell when I go line, I'm like, I'm in aisle A47. Go look at some of my lives, you guys, you will see. I'm in A47 um, on the third shelf, right in between uh, Tree Hunt and Shea Moisture. <laughs> You got to drive that traffic to your particular brand and you let them know. I'll say I'm on the bottom shelf. I'm please walk into, I got, I had a campaign called help a sister out. Okay. And now as we hit COVID and I couldn't get into the stores and travel, I had to start a marketing campaign called help a sister out. I reached out to business owners all the country and I said, go into the target or go into the Walmart location on 3636 West Grand Boulevard, go to the natural section, look in aisle 37 on the bottom shelf. Please grab the bubbling brown sugar shrub and please buy it. And if you would post uh, uh, post a picture of yourself with the product, that's what you have to do. And here's the other thing. Ask people to make sure they review your products. You guys, these reviews are so crucial. I am always, I send out text blasts. I post on social media. If you know, love and trust glam body scrubs, could you please post a wonderful review for me? It means more than you know. The pictures that you have of people like, hey, hey, got my dog. post that. Because these are the things that will draw traffic to your brand and get people to go in the store and find it. So definitely, definitely drive that traffic. It is okay to tell people I'm on the bottom shelf in aisle 37. Okay, that's perfectly fine. The more information you can provide, the better. If you guys look at some of my posts, I've gone in and put the address for each Target store that has my product. If I'm talking to, to uh, business owners in Georgia, I'm going through Decatur, uh, Mc McDonough, Atlanta, South Peachtree, wherever. <laughs> and I put the actual address, okay? Make it easy. You guys, I have a store locator on my website. I have a store locator tab where when you go to my website, all you have to do is put in your city or you put in your zip code and it will tell you where the nearest location is where you can find my products, Target or Walmart. So yes, all um, of that. Could go back over how you um 
how you got your packaging for your scrubs, my computer died. And you was and you was when I came back in, you were talking about the how the barcodes and the source codes <laughs> and that I was a little lost. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So with mine, I actually came up with my own um, label and logo. Um, honestly, when I went to Walmart, my Walmart buyer was like, um, I don't like the packaging. I don't like your labels. I don't like any, I mean, she didn't like it, but she said, she said, your inside is much better than your outside, but I don't like the labeling. And I'll give you guys another uh, tip too. When you're talking to your buyer, anybody, and they say they don't like something, don't just look at it as positive feedback. Don't get upset. Don't get an attitude. I didn't go off or anything. I said, well, tell me, what would you like? And she said, oh, I'm glad you asked. And she literally pulled me around on her side of the table and she started pulling up different brands and showing me what she liked the packaging to look like or what have you. And I basically went and I told her, I said, oh, absolutely. I will have my graphic team get right on that. I am the graphic <laughs> team, right? Okay. My graphic team will take care of that right away. Hello. So I went on Fiverr. <laughs> went on Fiverr. And had them put, put some labels together that I then went back and presented until we could find something that was acceptable. Now, the other parts of it were parts that, and I'll tell you guys, when you want to get an idea of what your packaging should look like, go look at what's on the shelf and emulate that. <laughs> so, so when you want to determine what your labeling and your packaging should look like, really, guys, seriously, go to that particular retailer, go and look at what's on the shelf, because guess what? The buyer already said yes to that one. So if the buyer said yes to that one, you make yours look like it, the buyer will say yes to you too. So I put together a compilation. I've got my little woman owned. I've got a made in America there. I've got the barcode there. I've got the usage and directions for use in that, what the ingredients are. And I talk about my charitable cost of donating proceeds to cancer and lupus um, survivors as well. But this is something that I came up with. And then um, when you want to mass produce them, usually the local printers are going to send out anyway, but I have a company called Consolidated Labels. They're out of Florida, Sanford, Florida, and they mass produce my labels for me and they send them to me on a great big roll. And so, and so we're doing all of that here in Detroit. Um, yeah, so that's those are the best ways to get ideas for your packaging. Again, go and see what, what similar products are on the shelf. And to the best of your ability, you know, use that. Don't copy it now. Don't copy and get sued. But, no, but no, make no. sure that the content and the things like that that are on their packaging, if you see if it's a food product and you're noticing that everybody's using a clear lid with a foil bottom, you may want to go with a clear lid and a foil bottom. You know, um, for, for green products, like I noticed in the store shelves that a lot of them use a lot of the light green and kind of pastel colors then that's what you want to do. My target buyer was the one that told me to color code my labels. When I first did them, they were all black and white. And when I talked to my target buyer, she was like, have you ever considered like doing a green for your peppermint eucalyptus, a purple for your lavender, a yellow for your lemon, red for your strawberry? And I just honestly never thought about that. It was a fantastic idea. The, um, the labels look beautiful. Everybody's going crazy over them, but it was just something that I never thought about. So I say that to say with your packaging, be prepared to tweak it a few times. It doesn't have to be awesome and amazing. It doesn't have to be the next greatest thing but you want to be able to have something that's at least presentable and at least has a barcode on it so they know that you're going in the right directions they will tweak it to their specifications and let you know what they like um, but the more shelf ready it looks the better off you're going to be and how about the barcode the barcodes come from gs1.org gs1.org Yes, uh -huh. and it looks like a little globe with a blue and orange label. And I was just saying, you definitely want to get the barcodes there. Don't buy bootleg barcodes. Don't buy secondhand or aftermarket barcodes because it's just going to jam you up at the end. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. I have a question. Sure. Um, and what 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 um system or platform do you use for like your automation? So like your text, your all that stuff. I'm sorry for your. Your automation, like when, you, when you're sending out email blasts or like text blasts or things like that. Do you okay. I actually um, send my text blasts out typically from. Okay. Okay. And then my other question is, you mentioned something about IFRA. What is that? Um, that's the certificate that typically, for example, if you have a product that you use essential oils or fragrance oils and things in, they'll have a certificate that has like a chemical breakdown in that. And typically when you go to get your testing done, they'll want you to send over a copy of that um, so that they can find out what ingredients you're using. Like I know with Target, with their clean, they want to know every component, um, all the chemical components that you're using. And once you go and you get 
you know, once you decide on your formulations, put it that way, once you finalize the formulations, that's just information that you're going to want to send over to the testing company. We have about four more minutes left here. If there's any last minute questions you have, you know, please get them in. Um, this has been a phenomenal presentation. Um, and we have, we do have something special uh, for you all. Tiffany was nice enough when I first contacted her to send me a box of her product. So what I did was I kept four of them um, and I gave some out and people love them to be able to draw random names. We're gonna draw four random people and we're going to send out a sample of her product to the four random people that win and you will be notified during your email. So we did wanna support you by doing that. We weren't selfish. We wanted people to be able to sample your product and it is the Mango brand. And Tiffany, where is your product in Cincinnati? Boy, you know what? Um, that's a good question. I'd have to, I, I wish I had attached a store locator. I can tell you. But it's at the Cincinnati Walmart. Um, and if I know which street too. So. And I don't know if they have more than one there, but I know it's in that, in the, um, uh-oh, uh, no, wrong one. And also your Instagram social media. Glam Body Scrubs, G-L-A-M-B-O-D-Y-S-C-R-U-B-S. It's Glam Body Scrubs on Facebook and on Instagram. And then my other page, my personal page is Tiffany um, Nicole Cartwright. Do we have any other questions? What's the zip code in Cincinnati real quick? I can pull it up. Oh, we got four or five. Uh, oh. oh, yes, ma'am. This is Loren This is Laurentia, Sora Laurentia. And I just want to tell Sora Tiffany, she has been such an amazing person uh, ever since I reached out to her on Facebook. I was one of those ones. <laughs> like, hey, girl, I'm on Walmart online. Hey, Sora. <laughs> Let's talk and chat. And ever since then, even at that moment of time, and, and I know it's, uh, I think it's a lot of ladies on the line. She is so authentic. We've never met, but we've talked several times and everything that she's sharing with you, I've told her over and I said, I'm just so appreciative, so grateful. Um, and, you know, just her, just her inspiration, just what she's doing. Um, it's really inspired me to kind of revamp and do my thing. And so I resubmitted back to Target and just waiting to hear the word. So what she's telling you ladies, to do i'm sorry my five-year-old wants some attention all of a sudden you know she's giving you the real you're at the table this when they talk about how do we get to the table she brought the table to you with the meal five course with the dessert with the wine with the nice china take it thank god for it because when i tell you it's been over a year since i've been start I, google has been my friend <laughs> yes and, 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 and she done cut out a whole lot of stuff you bang your head up against the wall on just even knowing the, t the terms and technology, because when you go to these, uh, you, if you're in front of Target, and I've talked to her by at Target, and she was very nice, and <laughs> but she was telling me things without telling me. And so I think someone mentioned um, about making homemade products. That's, what I, that's how I started. But basically they were like, we don't do mom and pop. You need a manufacturer. That's mm -hmm. basically what she was telling me, short and sweet. So was she sharing information with you, with you ladies? Write everything down do your homework tonight and keep it moving because when I tell you, if I knew all this information about a year ago, I would have cut a lot of time, but <laughs> my crazy and my wine drinking at night. <laughs> so, oh, absolutely. So. Also so. to the person that, um, there was someone that, thank you so much too. I appreciate it. Um, uh, there's a Geyer no road worries. target on Geyer drive in Cincinnati. And then another target on cold rain Avenue in Cincinnati. And then yes. the Walmart I was talking about is on Cunningham Road. That's the one I was trying to think of. Um, it's in all two, those two targets and also that Walmart. And then there's a Walmart on Chamber um, Drive in Milford, Ohio, too. I don't know how Thank far that's you. Like, those are the close ones. But yeah, we're in Thank all of those. Thank you very things. much. I'm going to go on tomorrow. <laughs> and also, don't, so don't, don't forget, listen, everybody go on Target.com and Walmart.com as well. because and, and I would suggest that to all you guys. Walmart.com, you can set your products on their marketplace like 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 now. So I strongly suggest start off on Walmart.com because the buyers do look and see 
um, when they're ready to put products on the shelf, they will look to see who's killing it on walmart.com. And if you if you got your products in their marketplace and you're selling there, um, they will that'll get you in front of the buyer. So if you're not already uploading your products there, you want to definitely go ahead and do that. I'm done. I if you don't mind, just one more question, and then we all we want to be mindful of your time. This has been amazing. So Diana, you're going to be at the last question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Diana. Um. Okay. Um. I'm sorry. I couldn't recognize um the name that you were saying. But uh, sorry, I apologize. It's okay. It's okay. Um. Someone men mentioned keep.com. What after I asked the question about the IFRA, what is that? what is keep.com keep is a crm so you were asking about somebody asked about what to use for text messaging and automation so that's a site that you oh, can use okay. you can house everything all in one and you don't have to go from one place over here emails okay. over here and then text messaging over here and then something else everything okay. all in one and chandra mentioned flavio so, also a cla was it clavio wait a minute clavio clavio somebody put yeah. clavio in the um in the chat too um can you please tell me what is the abbreviation for ifra tiffany what is who? the abbreviation the, i mean you gave the abbreviation already but what does ifra stand for mm, i can google it for you ifra <laughs> I'm dead. You know, so many acronyms, I don't know them all. I think it's the International uh, Fragrance Association. Yeah. Okay. All right. Number, I, I, thank you so much. Yeah, Tiffany. it's on really here. And they have, they have their chart and stuff on there too. And I, like, in fact, if you go to their, like, well, this is fragrance.org, says IFRA standards helping you to enjoy fragrance with confidence. So, yep, it's all out there. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you yes. so much. Absolutely. Okay, thank you so much for your time. This has been absolutely amazing and Congrats for all you, all the amazing you, the work you're doing. I know that we're gonna be seeing you in many 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 more stores. And thanks everyone for attending. I know you have questions left, but we do want to be mindful of Tiffany's time. She was traveling, um, so we really want to make sure that we be respectful. So thank you so much. And you thank know, you. Like, can I also let me just? I really don't mind. Let me just give my number two four eight two nine one four eight seven six. You guys can text me. I'm, I'm pretty accessible. 248-291-4876. And then also, you guys, I mean, you can you can reach out on social media, Tiffany Nicole Cartwright or Glam Body Scrubs. You can inbox me. Um, I'm on, like I said, Instagram, Facebook. You can inbox me with your questions. You can call or text me. I tell people I may not be able to respond right away. I may not be able to grab the call, but I typically do respond. I try to be really, really good about that. But I really want to be able to reach to really, like I said, continue to support you guys. I know we can't cover everything, but um, but yeah, thank you for the opportunity. And I just want to thank you guys for allowing me to invite other people on who had been asking me for this information. Thank you for allowing them to join the call as well, because I really had been meaning to do this anyway. But like I was saying earlier, with travel and launching and pop-ups, I just hadn't gotten around to it. So thank you guys for allowing everybody to join the call so I can share the information with as many people as possible. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. You are a wealth of information and we appreciate you. Thank you.